Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Back in the 90s, I used to work at a cemetery. I helped with the dirty work of digging the graves, lowering caskets, and helping with the upkeep of the fields. It was an easy enough job, and we hardly dealt with the customers, so we were pretty much left to ourselves as long as we got the job done and did it respectfully. I also typically only worked during the day, which I was fine, because some of the things that I witnessed were weird and creepy enough that I didn't need to know what happened at night. So, as mentioned, there were definitely some unforgettable events. We've had some edgy teens break in and run around the plots, we had a naked guy sleeping on a grave once, and someone even brought a gun, demanding we let him in after we had closed. So, it's not uncommon, but you still remember them. But there was one that messed me up for a very long time and actually led to me quitting. While we were working out on the grounds, we may occasionally see customers come and go, setting up services, making payments, and etc. We get all the work done on the plots the night before, so that way, we didn't have a huge hole open during business hours. We had a truck that also came and always parked on one side of the cemetery that delivered flowers and other lawn supplies. And right as the truck was pulling in, there was a car that sped into the lot, cutting off the truck and stopped right where the truck usually parked. It made no sense. There was a whole parking lot and they chose to stop there. I started walking up to the fence to ask the person to move their car, but also expecting pushback just by the way they drove in. A woman frantically got out of the car in sweatpants and a hoodie and also a messy bun, and she was looking around. I kindly asked her if she could park in one of the actual spots as that side was for the truck, not to mention a no parking zone technically. She immediately started yelling at me about how dare I ask something so inconsiderate and, Do you know why I'm here? I just lost my father. And so on. I immediately shuddered because I knew this was going to be brought up to the people inside and I couldn't really say anything to her because of the situation. So I just apologized and I walked away as she continued yelling. Someone did come out a little later and ask me what happened and I explained it all to them. Surprisingly, they understood and agreed that while it was common for people to come in still distraught, she was a little overboard. They said every time they would ask a question about what they wanted in the services, like the burial or cremation, visitation, type of flowers, and etc., she would burst into tears. They would try to calm her down and she'd be fine answering, until they asked another question. They said the whole process was exhausting, which told me a lot, because this person never complained about their job. I let it go and then moved on, thinking that I'd probably not see this person again. A few days later, we were digging the plots as normal, and then we cleaned up the edges. We made sure the grass looked nice along the edges, and things like that, when, lucky me, that woman shows up, walking towards me. I hold my breath expecting her to go off on me, but I kept my cool and greet her. She approached me smiling and asked if there was a plot number whichever. I pulled up my sheet to confirm and she told me that this was her father's. She then apologized for her reaction the other day and explained that it just had been hard for her since she took care of her dad and he was the only one that supported her too. I was polite because just as expected, she was just going through the stages of loss and everyone grieves differently. I told her that it was okay and gave her my condolences. She said that she just wished that it was her instead because more people cared about her dad than her. 
Not knowing a damn thing about this woman, I tried to say that it wasn't true, and being in this field of work, no pun intended, you may not think many people care about you, but the services always say otherwise, and that she had to continue on for her dad. I don't know if what I said helped her or not, but she cried a little bit. She hugged me and thanked me and started walking away. Right before though, she turned and asked me what time the cemetery closed, so I gave her the hours. I went home and told my wife about the woman, and she said that I did a good thing. She actually told me on the first encounter that she was probably going through a lot and not to judge someone based on that encounter. I suppose she was right, because that was definitely a different person that I met that day. So not only do we dig graves, but we also help lower the caskets and bury them. So the next day was going to be the services for her father. I got up like I do every morning. I get ready for work, kiss my wife goodbye, and I headed out for the day. I like getting there early to do the weed whacking, so that way, it's out of the way and there's no chance of disturbing any visitors. The owner is usually already there getting things in order on days of services, so I walked into the office and talked with him for a few minutes before. I was one of the manager-like people at that time, so I had keys to the cemetery as well. The owner asked me if I had seen his keys because they usually left the keys to the cemetery gate in his office, but they weren't there. I said I hadn't and double-checked that I just had mine. They said that they probably just left it somewhere as he had done that in the past and then excused me to get to work. I went to the shed to grab the weed whacker and then I headed out. And as I was walking around and getting closer to the plot that we had just dug the other day, I noticed the grass looking disturbed, like something was placed in it because it was flattened. I got angry at first, thinking it was another kid screwing around and this woman was going through enough. I didn't want something else to happen, so I started walking up to it to see what had happened. Well... I wish it was just some kids, but I found the woman laying in the grave in a black dress and blood all over her wrist. Not knowing what to do, I immediately started yelling for the owner and I jumped in the hole. The ground was damp from blood and she was already pale, cold, and unresponsive. But thankfully, Henry heard me and came out and called 911 and then brought me a ladder to get us out. When the paramedics arrive, I heard them say that she had already lost a lot of blood, but that she would be okay, and then they were gone. I actually took the rest of the day off. I called my parents and my two sisters to let them know that I love them. That really hit me hard. This woman really didn't feel like she was worth it, or that it was worth it to stay around and felt this way was the only option that she had. No one should feel that alone. If it wasn't for her shallow groan, I would have thought that she was dead. But knowing she was close enough to that scared me enough. If I didn't come earlier, who knows how long it would have been before she was found. Thankfully, she did live though. We learned that she broke in through a back room window and then stole Henry's keys. I'm also thankful that he didn't press charges on her, but I heard the funeral for her father was a little off. I had to quit shortly after this. The first time I really talked to any of the customers, got to know them even that little bit, and then having to save their life was really too much for me. I found out what hospital she was at, and my wife and I thought that it was a good idea to send her flowers and a gift. I hope my words did something for her, something to keep her going, because it seemed like she just needed someone to support her again, or let her know that she wasn't alone. If you take anything from this, just let it be, to be kind to people, because you never know 
what they're going through. I used to do part-time work for my dad at a cemetery at about 15 years ago. He helped maintain the grounds by keeping the lawn mowed, flowers watered, and picked up left behind trash. After they had a service or around major holidays, he asked me to help out as more people meant more trash and things to pick up. Not to be disrespectful, but some of the stuff people left behind Stuff that couldn't stay, like open food and drinks, or just their trash tissues, wrappers, and things like that. And those people prefer coming back to see that their loved one's resting place is being respected, so that's where we come in. It's typically the same thing each time. I'd walk around, pick up, adjust, look at the headstones, occasionally explain to someone where or how to find specific plots. I also typically work during the day, so I didn't run into any creepy or paranormal experiences, which made the job even easier. Now, this one time though, I had to help my dad zone an area out for a family of three, a husband and wife and their child that were going to be buried. We had the area already, but it was further in the back, which was usually used by people of higher class, local celebrities, and I suppose things like that, so that families can have more privacy. At that time, I didn't pay too much attention to the news, but I did remember hearing how a family had been killed in their home in an apparent robbery. From the small things I could pick up from my dad, this was the same family. So we had to get it all plotted out, make sure the trees were trimmed, the surrounding area cleared for the services and etc. It was really an old day thing. Now on the days of service, there's no work being done in the grounds. My dad was usually in the back fixing things inside, doing paperwork, making calls and etc. And I ended up going up there to get my check and to just talk with my dad, but I didn't realize that the services were that day until I saw a full lot of vehicles, so I entered in the back to not interrupt anything. I talked with my dad for a while, but he seemed like his mind was elsewhere, like he seemed distracted, so I asked him about it. He said that the funeral almost seemed like something out of a movie, because they had a few cars that were far behind the rest of the group, and one man that got out of the vehicle had several other men surrounding him, like bodyguards. I didn't quite understand the concern over it and just tried to reason with him that they were probably important people. And if it's true what happened to the family, maybe it was police protection for the rest of them. He still seemed to be keeping an eye on them, but loosened up a bit. I ended up leaving a bit after to enjoy having the weekend off and a fresh paycheck. Now around this time, my mother had recently had surgery on her knee, so she needed a lot of help getting around. My sister worked overnights and was still living at home at that time, so she helped my mom while my dad was at work, and he took care of her in the evenings. The day after the service, I was at my parents for dinner, and while we were settling down after dinner, my dad was telling me how he had this weird feeling that something wasn't right. He said he couldn't explain it, but he just felt like something was wrong. We tried to go through the normal things, make sure the stove was off, the dog was inside, and nothing was missing. We even called my sister to make sure she was okay, which she was. Then my dad mentioned the cemetery, worried that he may have forgotten something there, like to close or lock the gates, the door to the crematorium, or something like that. And since he wasn't the owner, I could at least understand the concern because he would be responsible if anything happened. I offered to go check it out to make him feel better. They were both hesitant at first, but I finally convinced them that I would be fine. I didn't believe in any superstitions, and if all I had to do was to check some doors, then I would be fine. 
so I left with a promise to call them when I got there. I pulled up to the front and noticed an old beat-up car in the parking lot. The lot is usually empty, but we might occasionally get people parked there to sleep or just talking in their car or something. I got out and walked around the car, but as expected, there was no one in there and no one around. I figured the car just broke down as it looked like it hadn't moved in months as is. So, I walked up to the building, I checked the door, which had been locked, and then I went inside. I called my dad from the phone in the funeral home, and I walked around to make sure that everything was turned off and locked. I seemed to have calmed his nerves some more, so after I hung up, I locked the front entrance and then I started to head out. As I was walking back though, I noticed the gates to the grounds were partially open. There was usually this chain-like lock that went around it so no one could get in. It was just dangling from the fence, so my thought was, my dad probably just forgot to lock it up, and that was probably the issue he was having. I went to secure it, and when I look up into the fields, I had a weird feeling. Something was telling me to go check in there. I got annoyed with myself after convincing my dad that nothing was wrong, but something was really bugging me to check it out. So I skipped grabbing the golf cart and thought that I would do a quick walk through the grounds. Everything was looking fine until I kept walking towards the back. When I got there, there were two shovels sitting next to that family that was just buried, and even worse, they had been messed with. There was a pile of dirt on the side and they had knocked over one of the headstones. And as I went to turn around to go call someone, I was then knocked out cold. When I finally started to come back, I noticed that it was still dark and I was laying in the grass and my head was pounding. That's when I started hearing the familiar sounds of dirt being shoveled. I tried to turn around to check the sound when I felt something cold at the back of my head. I will never forget that sound. I just threw my hands up and stopped moving otherwise. I don't even remember what I said to them, but probably something pathetic and pleading. It felt like I was like this for hours though. I just remember there was at least three people, and they weren't speaking English, but I have no idea what language it was. And after a while, I was told to lie face down and count to a hundred. I know I didn't get far when I was knocked out again. This time when I woke up though, it was day, and I was not in the graveyard but in a hospital bed. Of course, my parents were there and they were freaking out and trying to explain what happened. When I wasn't back at their place after 20 minutes or so, my dad started getting worried. He went out himself to check but also called the cops to meet him there. When they arrived, they saw my car in the lot, me not in it, and one of the tires slashed. Then they found me. Those people had completely dug up the husband's grave and destroyed the coffin to obviously get something that he was buried with. But what? What could be so important that you have to dig up a grave for it? I know they never caught anyone, because I had to make a statement, and they kept me informed and as far as I know, no one in the family knows who could have done it either. Or, at least, they aren't talking. This did push my dad to convince the owner to get security cameras and since then, the worst they get is a raccoon or a person sleeping in the parking lot again. But I also won't go there alone at night anymore, either. My dad's family has owned a funeral home and cemetery for many generations. The old office was so small that it is now used as a storage shed for our equipment, and a bigger and better office was built. It's a blessing in the sense that I will always have a job, but it's definitely not for everyone. I am not the type that gets scared or uncomfortable when it comes to death, 
In fact, being in this field has made me more responsible when it comes to end-of-life decisions. At 32, I can tell you that I already have my plans laid out, so there isn't a burden on my family if anything were to happen. I'm sure some of my friends think that I'm weird, but hey, life is short and you never know what will happen tomorrow. I also feel like I am more open-minded and in tune with those that have passed and the paranormal because of this. My mother has always helped out at the funeral home, but ghosts and spirits have never been her thing. Even dealing with death every day, she didn't believe any of it was real. I say this because I couldn't really talk to her about what I witnessed, but my father believed all of it. In fact, we joke about having some frequent ghosts in our facility or on the grounds and speak about them as if they were living customers right in front of us. I feel our place has become locally popular because of the paranormal activity alone. Because I am so connected to them, they really hold a place close to me like family, and I wanted to share a few that I will always remember. When I was younger, my parents still brought me to the funeral home so that they could watch me, but when there was a service going on, I was at my grandparents or aunt and uncles. I appreciate them wanting me to understand that this is a normal thing, but also didn't want me to see anything a child shouldn't. So, I often saw people coming and going to the funeral home, caskets and urns coming in, and sometimes other random items that families might request. One in particular that stood out to me when I was about six was a really gorgeous blue casket, but it was also very small. We all know what that means. As I saw my parents setting up the room, I noticed the decals they were putting on the casket, which were different superheroes. My mom had explained to me that it was for a little boy that really liked them, and his parents asked for his final resting place to look like his room. So they dressed it up just as they wanted, before they brought him out for the services, and before the family arrived to set up the rest, like personal gifts and pictures, and I was ushered off to my aunt's and things continued as normal. After a few days, I was back there, playing in the back room and watching a movie, when I noticed that my dolls were falling off the small desk that was in there. Thinking nothing of it, I just picked them up and put them back. This actually happened twice more, and at that age, I was just getting annoyed and yelled, Stop it! It didn't happen again after that, but my dad had walked in and asked what happened. I told him what was going on when he smiled and said, Maybe we should ask nicely next time, and then he walked out, but left the door open that time. After a few minutes of getting back to my movie, I realized this, and I look over to the door. That's when I saw a young boy, wearing a long blue cape just standing there. Not knowing what to do, I just said hi, but he continued to stand there. I tried talking to him more, but he would never respond. So, I got up and closed the door, with him standing there. And a while later, my mom came in and asked how I was doing, and that's when I brought up the little boy. She said there weren't any boys there, and that's what he looked like. And after describing him to her, the look on her face changed to one of concern, and she just left the room. As I got older, I learned that my mom thought my dad told me about the little boy that was in the blue casket, or that I saw him because that was exactly what he looked like, down to the cape. Over time, my dad and I both got used to seeing the little boy. He became a little bit mischievous, and at times, just like my dolls, things would get moved, things would go missing, only to reappear right where they last were, or things would get knocked down. I finally found out his name so I could address him properly, and from there, 
It was as if I could communicate with him. I would ask him, Charlie, where did my pen go? And it would be in my seat or something. However, unlike some of the others, he's the only kid that I've seen and my dad and I are the only ones to see or experience his presence. The other experience occurred as a young adult. The cemetery is open all day for anyone to come and go as they please. Some people go by themselves or with another person or where I've seen a whole group of people practically trying to have a party or celebration for their loved ones. We usually let them be and give them their privacy until close. And when we're closing, we walk or drive around and let everyone know so that they can start heading out. After one particular service, there was a woman that stayed around long after the service was over. I knew it was the same woman because of her outfit. She was in a long black dress that was flowy towards the bottom because you could see the bottom of it move with the wind. It looked like it had either lace sleeves with attached gloves or full-length gloves. She also had one of those small cocktail hats that had a long black lace veil over her face. She had a long dark brown hair that was all pulled to the side over her shoulder. And she stood there holding her hands in front of her, staring at the plot. She was still there when we started making our rounds. It was closer to the front, so I decided to walk over to her, hoping that I could comfort her as well. And as I got closer to her, I heard one of the groundskeepers holler out for me. I turned around giving them a look of, Seriously? Because I felt it was rude to shout like that, but by the time that I turned back around, the woman was gone. I looked around for a moment trying to see if I could find her, but she was nowhere. So I turned around to walk back towards the groundskeeper, and I was about to tell him to not shout like that when he apologized and said he thought that it was okay since there was no one around. That's when I immediately mentioned the woman that was standing there, and his only response was, What woman? And at first I was confused, but it quickly clicked in my mind. I apologized to him and again, just advised to avoid shouting on the grounds while we were open. We finished up for the evening and started to leave when I was driving by the side of the grounds and saw this woman standing there again. I had to know for sure what I was seeing, so I pulled over. I walked up to the fence line and stared at her for a few seconds. And after a while, I watched her turn around walk off behind our big center oak tree, and then she was gone. And I drove around as far to the other side so I could see if she just went over to the other side, but she wasn't there. The next day, I went in and checked the books to see whose plot she was at. The plot belonged to a gentleman that was born in the 50s, and his wife and children survived him, so I was stumped as to who this woman would be. I started going back through the records to learn and found out his mother had passed away when he was still a child, and you guessed it, she was buried here as well. I went to find her plot and learned that it was on the opposite side of that oak tree. My guess is that she was here and was waiting to meet her son again. I still see her in passing, but I always let her have her space. It doesn't seem like she wants company, so I respect her space and try to tell others as well, the best that I can. We have had a few people say that they've seen her, and we've had a small talk for those that I know that are gifted like me. So, these were two experiences that have stuck with me since my time here, especially since they are two recurring events. It's not hard to open up and realize that we are not alone here, especially in my field. I feel it has drawn me closer to the paranormal, and I welcome the opportunity to possibly learn about someone's life and help celebrate it. And here are the top comments for my last video. A 
and here's the riddle for this video. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.